The Emirate of Transjordan Arabic, Amart Shirk al Ardan Imarat Shark al Urdan lit. Emirate of East Jordan, also hyphenated as Transjordan and previously known as Transjordania or Transjordania, was a British protectorate established in April 1921. There were many urban settlements east of the Jordan River, the largest one in Al Salt. Transjordan had been a no man's land following the July 1920 Battle of Maysalan, and the British in neighbouring mandatory Palestine chose to avoid any definite connection between it and Palestine", until a March 1921 conference at which it was agreed that Abdullah bin Hussein would administer the territory under the auspices of the British Mandate for Palestine with a fully autonomous governing system. The Hashemite dynasty ruled the protectorate, as well as the neighbouring mandatory Iraq. On 25 May 1946, the emirate became the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan. Achieving full independence on 17 June 1946 when in accordance with the Treaty of London ratifications were exchanged in Amman. In 1949, it was constitutionally renamed the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, commonly referred to as Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Background Under the Ottoman Empire, most of Transjordan was part of the Syria Vilayet. The inhabitants of northern Transjordan had traditionally associated with Syria, and those of southern Transjordan with the Arabian Peninsula. During World War I, Transjordan saw much of the fighting of the Arab revolt against Ottoman rule. Assisted by the British Army officer T. E. Lawrence, the Sharif of Mecca Hussein bin Ali led the successful revolt which contributed to the Ottoman defeat and breaking up of its empire. Establishment of British control In the secret Sykes Pickett Agreement of 1916, Transjordan was allocated to Britain. In March 1920, the Hashemite Kingdom of Syria was declared by Faisal I of Iraq in Damascus, which encompassed most of what later became Transjordan. At this point, the southern part of Transjordan was part of the Hashemite Kingdom of Hejaz. Following the provision of mandate to France and Britain at the San Remo Conference in April, the British appointed a High Commissioner in Palestine with a remit over the area west of the Jordan, and the French ended the Kingdom of Syria at the Battle of Maysalan. Transjordan became, for a short time, a no man's land. In August 1920, Sir Herbert Samuel's request to extend the frontier of British territory beyond the River Jordan and to bring Transjordan under his administrative control was rejected. The British Foreign Secretary, Lord Curzon, proposed instead that British influence in Transjordan should be advanced by sending a few political officers, without military escort, to encourage self-government and give advice to local leaders in the territory. Following Curzon's instruction Samuel set up a meeting with Transjordanian leaders where he presented British plans for the territory. The local leaders were reassured that Transjordan would not come under Palestinian administration and that there would be no disarmament or conscription. Samuel's terms were accepted, he returned to Jerusalem, leaving Captain Alec Kirkbride as the British representative east of the Jordan until the arrival on 21 November 1920 of Abdullah, the brother of recently deposed King Faisal, who marched into Ma'an at the head of an army of 300 men. Without facing opposition Abdullah and his army had effectively occupied most of Transjordan by March 1921. In early 1921, prior to the convening of the Cairo Conference, the Middle East Department of the Colonial Office set out the situation as follows. Distinction to be drawn between Palestine and Transjordan under the mandate. His Majesty's government are responsible under the terms of the mandate for establishing in Palestine a national home for the Jewish people. They are also pledged by the assurances given to the Sharif of Mecca in 1915 to recognize and support the independence of the Arabs in those portions of the Turkish Vilayet of Damascus in which they are free to act without detriment to French interests. The western boundary of the Turkish Vilayet of Damascus before the war was the River Jordan. Palestine and Transjordan do not, therefore, stand upon quite the same footing. At the same time, the two areas are economically interdependent, and their development must be considered as a single problem. Further, His Majesty's government have been entrusted with the mandate for Palestine. If they wish to assert their claim to Transjordan and to avoid raising with other powers the legal status of that area, they can only do so by proceeding upon the assumption that Transjordan forms part of the area covered by the Palestine mandate. 
In default of this assumption Transjordan would be left, under Article 132 of the Treaty of Severus, to the disposal of the principal Allied powers. Some means must be found of giving effect in Transjordan to the terms of the mandate consistently with recognition and support of the independence of the Arabs." The Cairo Conference of March 1921 was convened by Winston Churchill, then Britain's colonial secretary. With the mandates of Palestine and Iraq awarded to Britain, Churchill wished to consult with Middle East experts. At his request, Gertrude Bell, Sir Percy Cox, T. E. Lawrence, Sir Kinahan Cornwallis, Sir Arnold T. Wilson, Iraqi Minister of War Yah Far Alaskari, Iraqi Minister of Finance Sassan Effendi Sassan Heskale, and others gathered in Cairo, Egypt. An additional outstanding question was the policy to be adopted in Transjordan to prevent anti-French military actions from being launched within the Allied British zone of influence. The Hashemites were associated powers during the war, and a peaceful solution was urgently needed. The two most significant decisions of the conference were to offer the throne of Iraq to Emir Faisal ibn Hussein who became Faisal I of Iraq and an emirate of Transjordan now Jordan, to his brother Abdullah ibn Hussein who became Abdullah I of Jordan. The conference provided the political blueprint for British administration in both Iraq and Transjordan, and in offering these two regions to the sons of Hussein bin Ali, Churchill stated that the spirit, if not the letter, of Britain's wartime promises to the Arabs might be fulfilled. After further discussions between Churchill and Abdullah in Jerusalem, it was mutually agreed that Transjordan was accepted into the mandatory area as an Arab country apart from Palestine with the proviso that it would be, initially for six months, under the nominal rule of the Emir Abdullah and that it would not form part of the Jewish national home to be established west of the River Jordan. Abdullah was then appointed Emir of the Transjordania region in April 1921. On 21 March 1921, the Foreign and Colonial Office legal advisers decided to introduce Article 25 into the Mandatory Palestine, which brought Transjordan under the mandate and stated that in that territory, Britain could postpone or withhold those articles of the mandate concerning a Jewish national home. It was approved by Curzon on 31 March 1921, and the revised final draft of the mandate including Transjordan was forwarded to the League of Nations on of July 1922. In August 1922, the British government presented a memorandum to the League of Nations stating that Transjordan would be excluded from all the provisions dealing with Jewish settlement, and this memorandum was approved by the League on 12 August. Abdullah established his government on of April 1921. Britain administered the part west of the Jordan as Palestine, and the part east of the Jordan as Transjordan. Technically they remained one mandate, but most official documents referred to them as if they were two separate mandates. In May 1923 Transjordan was granted a degree of independence with Abdullah as ruler and St. John Philby as chief representative, the Hashemite Emir Abdullah, elder son of Britain's wartime Arab ally Hussein bin Ali, was placed on the throne of Transjordan. The applicable parts of the mandate for Palestine were stated in a decision of 16 September 1922, which provided for the separate administration of Transjordan. The government of the territory was, subject to the mandate, formed by Abdullah, brother of King Faisal I of Iraq, who had been at Amman since February 1921. Britain recognised Transjordan as an independent government on 15 May 1923, and gradually relinquished control, limiting its oversight to financial, military and foreign policy matters. This affected the goals of revisionist Zionism, which sought a state on both banks of the Jordan. The movement claimed that it effectively severed Transjordan from Palestine, and so reduced the area on which a future Jewish state in the region could be established. Governance Transfer of authority to an Arab government took place gradually in Transjordan, starting with Abdullah's appointment as Emir of Transjordan on 1 April 1921, and the formation of his first government on of April 1921. The independent administration was recognized in a statement made in Amman on 25 April 1923. Subject to the approval of the League of Nations, His Britannic Majesty will recognize the existence of an independent government in Transjordan under the rule of His Highness the Emir Abdullah, provided that such government is constitutional and places His Britannic Majesty in a position to fulfill his international obligations in respect of the territory by means of an agreement to be concluded with His Highness. 
During the 11th session of the League of Nations Permanent Mandates Commission in 1927, Sir John Shuckberg summarized the status of Transjordan. It is not part of Palestine but it is part of the area administered by the British government under the authority of the Palestine Mandate. The special arrangements there really go back to the old controversy about our wartime pledges to the Arabs which I have no wish to revive. The point is that on our own interpretation of those pledges the country east of the Jordan, though not the country west of the Jordan, falls within the area in respect of which we promised during the war to recognize and support the independence of the Arabs. Transjordan is in a wholly different position from Palestine and it was considered necessary that special arrangements should be made there. Transfer of most administrative functions occurred in 1928, including the creation of the post of High Commissioner for Transjordan. The status of the mandate was not altered by the agreement between the United Kingdom and the Emirate concluded on 20 February 1928. It recognized the existence of an independent government in Transjordan and defined and limited its powers. The ratifications were exchanged on 31 October 1929. Britain retained mandatory authority over the region until it became independent as the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan in 1946. The juridical status of the mandate under the Palestine Mandate Convention remained unchanged pending a decision on the Palestine question by the United Nations or Transjordan's admission to the United Nations as an independent state. See termination of the mandate. 1928 Treaty Transjordan remained under British control until the first Transjordanian Treaty was concluded in 1928. Transjordan became nominally independent, although the British still maintained a military presence and control of foreign affairs and retained some financial control over the kingdom. This failed to respond to Transjordanian demands for a fully sovereign and independent state, a failure that led to widespread disaffection with the treaty among Transjordanians, prompting them to seek a national conference the 25th of July 1928, the first of its kind, to examine the articles of the treaty and adopt a plan of political action. According to the US State Department Digest of International Law, the status of the mandate was not altered by the agreement between the United Kingdom and the Emirate concluded on the 20th of February 1928 which recognized the existence of an independent government in Transjordan and defined and limited its powers. The ratifications were exchanged on 31 October 1929. <inaudible> <inaudible> borders The borders and territory of Transjordan were not determined until after the mandate came into effect. The borders in the east of the country were designed so as to aid the British in building an oil pipeline from their mandate of Iraq through Transjordan to seaports in mandatory Palestine. The strategically important southern section with an outlet to the Red Sea were incorporated into Transjordan by Abdullah, thus taking over the provinces of Ma'an and Aqaba from the Kingdom of Hejaz in 1925. Topic. Population With respect to the demographics, in 1924 the British stated, "...no census of the population has been taken, but the figure is thought to be in the neighbourhood of 200,000, of whom some 10,000 are Circassians and Chechen, there are about 15,000 Christians and the remainder, in the main, are Muslim Arabs." No census was taken throughout the British Mandate period, but the population was estimated to have grown to 300,000 to 350,000 by the early 1940s. Defense The most serious threats to Abdullah's position in Transjordan were repeated Wahhabi incursions by the Ikhwan tribesmen from Najd in modern Saudi Arabia into southern parts of his territory. The emir was powerless to repel those raids by himself, and had to appeal for help to the British who maintained a military base with a small air force at Marka, close to Amman. The British military force was the primary obstacle against the Ikhwan between 1922 to 1924, and was also utilized to help Abdullah with the suppression of local rebellions at Kura, and later by Sultan Adwan, in 1921 and 1923 respectively. 1946 independence and establishment of the kingdom 
On 17 January 1946, Ernest Bevin the British Foreign Secretary, announced in a speech at the General Assembly of the United Nations, that the British government intended to take steps in the near future to establish Transjordan as a fully independent and sovereign state. The Treaty of London was signed by the British government and the Emir of Transjordan on the 22nd of March 1946 as a mechanism to recognise the full independence of Transjordan upon ratification by both countries' parliaments. Transjordan's impending independence was recognized on April 18, 1946 by the League of Nations during the last meeting of that organization. On 25 May 1946 the Transjordan became the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan, when the ruling Amir was re-designated as King by the Parliament of Transjordan on the day it ratified the Treaty of London. The 25th of May is still celebrated as Independence Day in Jordan although officially the mandate for Transjordan ended on June 17, 1946 when in accordance with the Treaty of London the ratifications were exchanged in Amman and Transjordan gained full independence. In 1949 the country's official name was changed to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. When King Abdullah applied for membership in the newly formed United Nations, his request was vetoed by the Soviet Union, citing that the nation was not fully independent of British control. This resulted in another treaty in March 1948 with Britain in which all restrictions on sovereignty were removed. Despite this, Jordan was not a full member of the United Nations until December 14, 1955. The Anglo-American Treaty, also known as the Palestine Mandate Convention, permitted the U.S. to delay any unilateral British action to terminate the mandate. The earlier proclamation of the independence of Syria and Lebanon had said, "...the independence and sovereignty of Syria and Lebanon will not affect the juridical situation as it results from the Mandate Act." Indeed, this situation could be changed only with the agreement of the Council of the League of Nations, with the consent of the Government of the United States, a signatory of the Franco-American Convention of 4 April 1924." The U.S. adopted the policy that formal termination of the mandate with respect to Transjordan would follow the earlier precedent established by the French mandate for Syria and the Lebanon. That meant termination would generally be recognized upon the admission of Transjordan into the United Nations as a fully independent country. Members of the U.S. Congress introduced resolutions demanding that the U.S. representative to the United Nations be instructed to seek postponement of any international determination of the status of Transjordan until the future status of Palestine as a whole was determined. The U.S. State Department also received a legal argument from Rabbis Wise and Silver objecting to the independence of Transjordan. At the 1947 Pentagon Conference, the U.S. advised Great Britain it was withholding recognition of Transjordan pending a decision on the Palestine question by the United Nations. Transjordan applied for membership of the United Nations on 26 June 1946. The Polish representative said that he did not object to the independence of Transjordan, but requested that the application be postponed for a year on the grounds that legal procedures required by the Covenant of the League of Nations had not been carried out. The British representative responded that the League of Nations had already approved the termination of the mandate in Transjordan. When the issue was voted on, Transjordan's application achieved the required total number of votes, but was vetoed by the Soviet Union which did not approve membership of any countries with which it did not have diplomatic relations. This problem and similar problems caused by vetoes of the memberships of Ireland, Portugal, Austria, Finland and Italy took several years and many votes to solve. Jordan was finally admitted to membership on 14 December 1955. See also Ultrajordan Transjordan region Notes References Topic. Bibliography Eilin, Joab B., Alan, Yoav the, 15th of April 2007. the Making of Jordan, Tribes, Colonialism and the Modern State. I. B. Tories. ISBN 978-1-84511-138-0 Bentwich, Norman The Mandate for Transjordan. British Year Book of International Law. Humphrey Sumner Milford. 10-212.
Gubser, Peter. The 1st of January 1991. Historical Dictionary of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Scarecrow Press. ISBN 9780810824492. Wasserstein, Bernard. 2008. Israel and Palestine: Why They Fight and Can They Stop? Profile Books. ISBN 9781846680922. Topic: External Links. Jordan History: The Making of Transjordan, King Hussein's Official Page. U.S. Library of Congress Country Study.